but you know who I am. I'm the real axe. What the fuck's up, guys? What's going on? I'm here with my dude from Sweden, Demos Official. Buddy, what's going on, man? How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Man, I'm great. I'm great. I can't complain. I'm wonderful. I got some blueberry pie. Um, I got a drink in front of me. I got a stream going. Everything's perfect, man. Nice. It doesn't take much to make me happy, you know. <laughs> um, so we're going to BS a little bit. We'll talk about whatever the hell we want to talk about. Talk about anything you want to talk about, man. So so what's up, Demos? What what are you into, man? What are you, what are you getting into? Well, I'm not into music, streaming, games, getting to new, new, new people, networking, that kind of stuff. Okay. So you're trying to... Uh... Trying to make your mark on the streaming career and uh, trying to make your mark on a music career. Are you trying to do both? Or are you trying to just well, do one? Or At the moment, I'm trying to do both and then I will see which one turns out to be the thing I will do. Which one's going to be the most fruitful? Okay. Yeah. Why not do both, though, man? I mean, there's no reason why you couldn't, right? Probably, but it's the time as well. True. But let's say, like, let's say you made a track and it got like 100 million hits on it and it was like super popular. And then you got signed with a company and they're like, dude, we want you to come play all over the place. You're going to do a tour, blah, blah, blah. The, you know, the dream happened. It's like, why not? Why not take your streaming into account with that and stream it, stream your music as you tour? You know, you could totally do both. Yeah, that that was pretty good. I have a thought of it. Yeah, I would totally do that. Yeah, that was a good, a really good idea, actually. Hey, thanks. I'm full of those. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> sometimes I am, and sometimes I'm full of shit. So if if I'm full of shit, just ignore me. But I, I I'm gonna try not to be. <laughs> so what uh, what game are you playing right now, man? What are you into? Uh, at the moment, Fortnite, Call of Duty, Black Ops 3, CSGO, FIFA. Okay. Yeah, I, I play Fortnite. I Honestly, I'm almost done, dude. They, do you think it sucks, this update? What do you think about this new update? This season, it's pretty bad. Yeah, it's, it's terrible. It's horrible. Yeah, I, don't know. I don't know what they have done with the game. I, I don't know either, man. I was playing earlier today when you were talking to me um, through Facebook. Um, I was editing down the last podcast episode. And as I was waiting for everything, like the audio to render and everything, I was playing a few games of Fortnite. And I got into a firefight with one guy. Um, he came he came driving like right at me in, an, in the ATV. Um, and I had a gold scar and I had a purple heavy shotgun. And so I knocked him for, I hit him for 80 on the ATV and he hopped off of it and started like, he's basically just trying to run me down. Um, but he hopped off of it. And so I pushed him and, you know, we did that whole thing where you, somebody builds like a one by and you chase each other around with shotguns till somebody's dead bullshit. Um, yeah. I smacked him four times with a heavy shotgun, and he still killed me. And he had four, uh, he had 16 HP left after that. <laughs> I know the feeling. Like it, it seems like that shit happens more and more and more as I keep playing, and as the seasons progress, that shit happens more and more, and I fucking hate it. But still, we still play the game. Yeah, that, that's the thing. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know if I'm stupid or if I'm hopeful or both. Like I, It's like, I hope they're going to fix this, but I might be stupid because I don't think that they are. We'll see. <sighs> What's your favorite weapon? My favorite weapon? Yeah. Well, my least favorite weapon is the gray pistol. For sure, <laughs> um, and that's the weapon I always found find first. Yeah, yeah. But my favorite weapon must be the tactical shotgun. Okay, 
I do like the tack shoddy too. I like the blue one, for sure. Yeah, Some, it's really good. Sometimes it's really good, and then sometimes it's really bad. All weapons have its up and down sides. Yeah, but they kind of had like before this last season. You remember how you you could like run around and smack somebody for like four with a shotgun point blank. Yeah. Yeah, they kind of got to hold on that a little bit. And now it's like the minimum damage you'll do is what, like 16? I think. I don't know. I don't know. Hell, I don't know either, man. It's just really pissing me off. That's all I know. They always do with the games. They start off first with the game. It's really, really good that they just go downhill from there. It seems like it, man. Like. I don't know if they get like too complacent with what's going on or if they just get like too comfortable and they're like, yeah, we're doing fine. Let's just add some shit to the game and not make it any better. I don't know what they do. I don't know. I'm going to eat this pie while we're doing this. I can tell you that. Go ahead. Do you like blueberry pie? I'm more for a rhubarb pie. I've never had rhubarb. Oh, yeah. For, you should uh, try it. I've never had it because for my country, it's all for old people. Oh. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> no, but you, you should really try it. Hang on, my wife's talking shit. What? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Did you hear that? No. She said rhubarb pie makes you poop. Is that true? Not from my end. <laughs> Literally not from your end. <laughs> <laughs> she said it's a natural laxative, and if you eat it, it makes you poop real bad. He said it's not. He says you're... Well, he says you're a fucking liar, and he says you're talking shit, so... Well, mine was probably oh, I said that? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like rhubarb pie has other stuff in it. It has what in it? Maybe somebody spiked it with a laxative. Get it? You see what I did there? Yeah, you stole my screen name. So you're spiking it with laxatives? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Probably, dude. I've never had rhubarb pie. It just... Probably. It never sounded delicious. Isn't it like a root? I don't know what rhubarb is. What is rhubarb? Rhubarb... Uh, I, have, well, I don't know how to explain it. I just don't know what it is. I'm going to look it up because I'm curious. It's on Wikipedia. It's got to be true. On the 1600th century, it was um, like a medicinal plant. Oh. What I can see here. It is an herbaceous perennial growing from short, thick rhizomes. The edible stalks are used in cooking. But the large leaves contain high levels of oxalic acid, making them inedible. Huh. Well, if you cook them, they're edible. Hmm. Although rhubarb if you eat is them, if you if you eat them raw, they're sour as hell. Ah, okay. It says although rhubarb is a vegetable, it's often put into the same culinary uses as fruits. Yeah. Huh. And it does say it has laxative properties, so it can make you poop, man. Well, it doesn't make me poop. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just know that I've never had it, and I don't really feel like after reading that, I don't feel like I'm missing out much, you know? It's not that bad, I promise you. Some people like it. Valkyrex, what's up, man? How you doing? How you doing, bro? How you doing? The rhubarb pie is the best pie I ever had. Now, what about apple pie? Do you not like apple pie? I prefer rhubarb pie. Out of everything that you can have, you want rhubarb. Yep. I know, I'm weird. That's okay, man. We all got our thing. I'm sharing our... Uh, I'm sharing the lax cast right now.
So what's going on in your life, man? So let's, I got that shared now that I can focus. What's going on in your life? What do you, what do you do with yourself, man? What do you, where do you work? What do you do in your other free time besides streaming and music? Well, I work at a gas station and the streaming, the producing, the work is pretty much what I do. Okay. So like, have you have you ever been to the United States at all? No, I have not. Okay, well, I've never been to Sweden, so it's going to be hard to relate things. Um, I don't I don't know a lot about Sweden, <clears throat> other than the, the economy is pretty cool from what I hear. <laughs> you heard wrong. Ah, I figured. What's up with the economy? Well, uh, there's one thing that's called Åkassa. That's when you're unemployed, you can get help from the government. Yeah. And um, for some reason, the, there's no money left. Really? Yeah. So there, uh, we pay a monthly fee to the Åkassa just to make it go around so unemployed people can get help and find work and that kind of stuff is unemployment a really big thing there because I heard that it wasn't uh, yeah it is really like is it really it's bad uh, really bad wow I heard the exact opposite well that's what you heard no offense but what you heard that's not true they're just trying to cover it all oh shit we got a conspiracy so what makes yeah. it what makes it so bad, man? What like what's going on over there? The government. Uh, we had a, an election mm. like last month, and uh, now they can't uh, create a government because they won't cooperate. Oh, okay. And now they're talking about new election and that kind of stuff, and it's been going on for over a month now, so. Ah, so and they they refuse to talk to each other. So they're gonna like basically strike up a mutiny and like destroy the government and break it down and build a new one or what? I don't know. I don't know what will happen. That's gonna be scary, dude. That's a government. Does that like cause a lot of panic in your community or like people worried about it legitimately or? At the moment, yeah. Wow, holy shit. I Especially had... in the part of Sweden where I live. Yeah? Yeah. What's different about where you live? Well, we have a lot of immigrants. Uh, they come mm. to Sweden and trying to escape the war in their country. And uh, of course they can come and get help, but... Um, Sweden has taken in a lot of refugees that we've taken in too many if I put it like that Okay. and so now they're unemployed, they're living on the streets and yeah the immigrants are? They, yeah Ugh. dude that sucks but we, the government uh, doesn't do anything about it either they're just like welcoming them in with open arms pretty much yeah, even if we don't have room for them. The hell, man. That's crazy. Like, we have can... immigration issues, like, especially down south, like on the southern border. Um, mm. our, our problem is Mexico, um, South America. But, um, like, where I'm at, I'm in the mid. I'm in the Midwest, so like I'm right in the almost in the middle of the United States. We don't have any of those issues. We just don't have any industry here, which is why our economy mm. sucks. Otherwise, it'd probably be pretty good. Yeah, but uh, I don't know what the Swedish government is up to because they're not making things better. I can tell you that. much. It's hard to tell, ma'am, especially when they don't give you guys like any good answers. And don't tell you anything at all. It's hard to tell. Yeah. That's got to be scary as shit, man. We went through that in... 
we went through like an economic crash in 2008 mm. and it was like really really bad all of our like manufacturing stuff um was the first it was the first industry to go um so primarily like in my area people build a lot of cars um for like ford which is in they work in detroit they have a plant there um it was literally like one day they were operational and then literally the next day they were just closed like they closed the doors thousands of jobs gone and it was like that everywhere man i lost just my overnight job. yeah yeah I, I lost my job too and i was unemployed for almost um almost a full year oh and we have like a we have a similar like unemployment program where it's paid in through the taxpayers and stuff and mm. I had to take advantage of that. And it was probably, it was like literally like a fifth of what I was making on my income. It wasn't shit. Um, it was enough to put gas in my car and maybe eat. But I was young enough, I was still living at home. So I didn't have like rent or anything like that, which was a godsend. Otherwise, I would have been fucked. I would have been out on the streets homeless. Mm. But... Oh, it was terrible. It was a terrible year, dude. That was like the most depressed I'd ever been in my life. It was terrible. And then I got down to like the last literally like $50 in my pocket. Um, and then I'd been looking forever for a job and finally found one and got hired. And it was like the biggest weight off of my shoulders in my life. And a couple years after that, everything kind of progressed and got a lot better. But it just, our economy just crashed. Just, <laughs> somebody dropped a Whoa. bomb on the whole economy and just blew it up, dude. But it sucked. A lot of people lost jobs. A lot of people around here lost their homes. Everything. That's rough, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty hard to get a job here, too. After I uh, finished school, I was unemployed for... One and a half year before I got a job. Shoot. But I was living at my mom, so. Yeah. Yeah, but one and a half year. So is this? I was just sitting home, and I was in this program that the uh, work. There's a place called Arbetsförmedling in here in Sweden that helps you find job. Yeah. And uh, I was in that program, but they didn't help me at all. Hmm. And uh, for me to uh, receive that uh, money to uh, as I as an un unemployed, I have to go to the office for mailing to get the money. Otherwise, they would cancel it. <laughs> so I went to a place uh, that didn't find me a job because I was going to look for a job, but I didn't get any job. Jesus. Yeah. So if you were living by yourself at that time, you would have been screwed too. Yeah, I would live on the street right now. Nuh uh. Um. So like, is this your own place that you have now that we're looking at? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um. Is it an apartment or do you own a house or? No, it's an apartment. Okay. Okay, I got gotcha. you. We're we're renting a place right now. This is a house that we rent until we're ready to find something that we want to buy, but. It's it's not bad. It gives me plenty of office space. I like that. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it was bad. The economy sucked. It went down really far, and then after that it picked up. But it took a couple of years to swing back around and, like, balance out. Uh, so let's talk about something, like, less fucking depressing. <laughs> <laughs> so your your music, man, what, what got you involved into that? What made you want to start making music? Uh, to be honest, uh, like four four and a half years ago, my cousin showed me a uh, artist, a music producer that's called Headhunters. Mm -hmm. uh, I listened to one of his songs, and right at that moment, I was stuck in that music. Just immediately hooked, huh? Yeah. I know that feeling. I've been there with a couple things in my life. That's good that you uh, trusted your gut and followed it and said, this is good for me and I'm going to do it. But and uh, the music, it likes brings good feelings to me. Mm -hmm. If you know what I mean. Yeah, absolutely, I do. 
and you can do that with a lot of things not just music a lot of people find that in you know like photography or graphic design or streaming or whatever um yeah i've been there quite a few times in my life because i like to do i like to do everything and there's not like one solid thing that i want to do with my life i want to do a little bit of everything yeah so it's kind of cool i get that feeling out of many things um well it's good to have a variation to just not just one concentrate on one thing yeah yeah i think so to be well-rounded especially with the way the world is today oh yeah it mm. comes into play um so what what programs do you use to build your music from or how are you how do you produce it uh, i uh, use a software called fruity loops okay i'm familiar that's the software i'm using yeah, I use um, kind of a similar one, uh, Mixcraft, if you're familiar with that. No, I've never heard of it. Yeah, it's kind of the same thing. Um, it's just really easy because I dabble around with it. I'm not really like too serious like you are. Um, I play around in it. It's, it's a good teaching tool. It's a good learning experience with that one. It's basic, easy to understand, and kind of like Fruity Loops, you're just making loops, putting them together. And you can add your effects and your mixer and all the stuff you need to add with it. So yeah. they all kind of do the same thing anyway. So what kind of music do you like to make, man? Uh, I'm really into hard style. Okay. Is that the That's only the, style that you like? At the moment, yeah. Okay. How many tracks have you made? Uh, I started uh, like four years ago but I it's more intensive now so at the moment I've done not released hmm. uh, two hard style tracks and actually two tropical house tracks okay cool do you have them out on like SoundCloud or where are they at no nothing like that yet you haven't put them out yet no why I don't know why are you nervous to do it yeah, I, I feel like they're not completed, even though they are. <laughs> oh man, that's the uh, that's the plight of the artist and the creator, man. Is that you can finish something, which I do this all the time, especially with like graphic design and my video editing stuff. Is I can mm. I can know in the back of my mind that that's like okay, this is done, this is completed, hundred percent done, and I'll like save it and take a break and go do something else and come back and like want to upload it and then i'll double check and like watch it or listen to it again i'll be like maybe i need to Something's look through missing. this again yeah is there something yeah. i can add to it and i'm just like no just leave it alone man just leave it the fuck alone post that shit but no you gotta post it man post it up let people hear it let your uh let your creativity fly dude yeah i think probably the should yeah yeah, don't be worried about that. People, if they like it, they'll like it. If they hate it, tell them to fuck off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. There's something out there for everybody, dude. Somebody somebody out there is going to love it, and somebody out there is going to hate it, no matter what you do. No matter how good it is or how bad it is. I mean, yeah. there, there are plenty of, uh, plenty of artists in my country who really fucking suck and people love them and I don't understand why if trust me if they can do it you're gonna be fine <laughs> then you should listen to Swedish music then you will hear something that you will hate you need to listen to today's rap in America Gab what's up dude um, I know they have like I know they have Swedish rap and stuff but do they have like so they have like mumble rappers in sweden yeah people who just like that's what we have that's the problem that we're having in america is with our rap music specifically is that there are people who like just come out of nowhere um and get signed and make a little bit of money and all they do is just suck and they get paid for that and they mumble rap so instead of like saying lyrics like the song is different every single time that they do it on tour because they're just mumbling shit like literally like that i know and they're getting they're getting signed for it as well 
It's That's fucking ridiculous. It sucks. It sucks, dude. Yeah. I I don't listen to rap, so... Ugh. You're lucky. I don't listen to it either. But I'm, like, surrounded by it everywhere I go. But, no, Geb, it's going well, man. How are you, buddy? But, no, I I hate that shit, man. If, like, if you have a good piece of music, post that. We The world needs it, dude. The world... Fight the mumble rappers. Please. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, that, that's awesome, dude. I, I like that you make music and stuff. Um, but I know you... It's really fun, though. So, like, is... That's, like, the one thing that you would rather do? Like, would you rather make music all day, or would you rather stream all day? Oh, don't make me choose between one of the two. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to, man. This is the lax cast. You have to choose one. Oh, man. <laughs> uh... <laughs> See? Do both. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, do both. That's my choice. I would do both. But I do everything, so I understand the dilemma. Because the the two things matters to me so much, so it's hard to choose one of them. Yeah, yeah. Um, stream stream yourself creating your music. I do that with my graphic design, man. I like to stream, and I like to make graphics and graphic design work. So I'll stream myself um, making graphics on my computer. Yeah. Uh pretty clever right the, the thing i'm afraid of when i'm if i'm going to stream while well, i create music is people will take it and claim it as their own um that's why we have soundcloud and stuff like if you publish it to soundcloud people could try to steal it um there are, there are ways to do it dude it's gonna get stolen no matter what just don't put your shit on spotify you won't make mm. any money but here in the United States, you might, because they just passed what's called the MMA, the Music Modernization Act. So, like, you're familiar with Spotify, right? Yeah. So, you know that you know that you can go to Spotify and you can look up whatever artist and whatever song that you want to look up. And you can listen to whatever song you want. Mm. But the question is, how the fuck do they make money? How do the artists make money off Spotify? Do you know? Yeah, it uh, it like they're making money uh, of how many times the songs is being played. Yeah, but what happens is that that money that they're making literally is like point zero zero one cent. Yeah, they're not making shit, and that's why the Music Modernization Act was passed because basically all the popular musical artists got together and were angry and they basically went to these people and they said you guys are fucking us man um we're losing a lot of money hundreds of thousands of dollars if not millions for some and you guys are paying us pennies on the dollar and they keep the rest and spotify keeps the rest dude they're making fucking bank they are making bank they're making yeah. so much money and handing out so little of it. Mm -hmm. So that's why the MMA was passed. Um, so now these guys aren't getting fucked. And now people like Spotify and Pandora, um, possibly SoundCloud, depending on what they're doing. Now that kind of gives them an opportunity to sit back and be like, oh, fuck, we're screwed. We owe people so much money. <laughs> yeah. Yo, Vlad, what's up, buddy? They better start paying out that too. They're going to have to. Because yeah. people are going to start suing them now. And that's why people like uh, Taylor Swift. Do you know who she is? Yeah. That's why she had her music off of Spotify for like a solid year. She took all of her shit off of it. Because the MMA wasn't um, enacted and she knew she was getting screwed. So she didn't put her music on Spotify forever. Not a thing. And she just recently put it back up. But I think she knew what was going on. She's smart. Yeah. That's the thing also when you're an artist, you have to keep a check on things like that. Well, you got to protect yourself, man. You, you got to yeah. protect yourself. Especially 
we as streamers, man, we gotta we gotta cover our asses. Cause if you think about like it's really cool how Twitch has it set up with uh, whether you're partnered and it's ad revenues and all that stuff. But as far as like an affiliation, um, it's really cool. You can track everything right inside your page. You can see everything on how you're doing and how much money you're making. Um, you know, like Twitch tells you upfront what their cut is and what your cut is. And it's basically like a 50, 50 split, which is great. Yeah. Um, so like the people who sub to my channel, um, half of it goes to Twitch and then half of it goes to me and it's really cool to make money that way, dude. Yeah. So we got to get you affiliated. So, um, you, uh, you fucking awesome people out there who are watching, go follow this dude, Demos Official on uh, Twitch. Go follow him. He's trying to get affiliated. Let's get his ass affiliated. Let's get some money in his pocket so we can make some music. I'm not far from it, though. The only thing I'm missing is the three average viewers. Oh, damn. That's You can do that, no problem, man. And I'm currently at 2.25, I think. Oh, so you're basically like right there. Yeah. Oh, we'll get you some followers, man. We'll get you affiliated. I appreciate it. If you chill in the Discord for a little bit and get to know the community in there, they'll they'll back you, man. It's a really cool yeah. community. Everybody's really, really nice in there. People that I've never met face to face and they're wonderful people. I like to network as well, so I get to know pe new people and Good. You should. That's one of the really for like newer streamers, that's one of the always the weak points is knowing how to network, knowing how to advertise, and knowing how to brand yourself. No. Yeah. Oh, I got a follower already. Hey. Gibstar24. Thank you for the follow, man. Yeah. It's really appreciated. He's a cool guy. Entrepreneur. Businessman. Oh. Really nice guy. He's pretty much... Uh, He's been around since day one, man. He's pretty kick-ass. Oh, day, since day one? Yeah, he's a day one guy. He's he's one of the... Uh, one of the lax OGs. Original gangsters. I'm gonna check out this channel. He's a busy guy. I know he doesn't stream all the time. But he does when he can. And he does what he can do. As you see. But, um, yeah, he's a cool dude, man. So what else, what else do you do, man? Do you watch Netflix? Do you into movies? Are you into anything else? No, it's pretty much the streaming, the music, and my work. How many hours did you put in a week at work? At work, I, I just only work uh, part-time, so uh, at the moment I have, like, in a month, I work, like, between 25 to 35 hours. That's not that bad. No. And uh, it helps me to have the apartment as well. And when I'm off work, I stream and do the music thing. Gotcha. See, I work full time at a really shitty job that I'm trying not to work at anymore. Um, last week I put in 74 hours. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're at the station I'm at, there's one, two, three, four. We're five people, and we're all working part-time, so we have, like, one opens at 6 o'clock in the morning and starts at 1 in the afternoon. Then, then the other one takes over from 1 o'clock to 10 o'clock in the evening. Okay. And then it goes on and on like that. I got you. I got you. It's a pretty chill job, especially in the weekends. Everyone's at home asleep, and there's no customers standing there with my phone and getting paid, <laughs> basically. Dude, that's that's actually a really good advantage for you because when you have downtime like that, you can like hop on your Twitter and like network your ass off all day long. Yeah. If I if I had the time to do that at work, I'd have like ten thousand followers, no problem. <laughs> I'm serious, not even joking. Not even joking, uh, man. I'd take full advantage of that. Yeah, and uh, 
but I don't I don't use my I I don't I'm not allowed to use my phone when I work because we had a lot of robberies uh, Ooh, in the past really? few months. Yeah. I thought like the and crime rate was low in Sweden. <laughs> it's sky high. Oh my god, are you kidding? <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. <laughs> like a lot of people in the United States think Sweden's like one of the top places to live ever. Well, go to Sweden and you'll see the difference. Oh, I don't want to now. <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> yeah, and the thing is, I'm leaving here. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, the crime rate's really bad. Yeah. Uh, so, were the there... Robert is, uh, I was, uh, I was in the two of the three robberies in that month. Two you, of them you were was there for life. That? Yeah, I was working at the time. Jesus. Like, did they pull a knife on you? Yeah, knife, axe, you name it. But no guns, though, right? No guns. Because they don't have them in Sweden? They got yeah, rid of they, them? G- g- no, they, they have guns. Oh, I thought they uh, I thought they got rid of their like the civilian guns and things. Like they, they allow civilians to have firearms? There are civilians that have firearms, yes. Okay, okay. I don't know where I got that from then. Never mind. Um, well, the, the police had one thing where they're... Got a chance to uh, leave their weapon away, but everyone did, and then they got new weapons. So, ah, uh, okay. Yeah, I'd say fuck you guys. I'm carrying my gun. <laughs> well, they have more than one weapon, so right. I've got a safe like right there with a bunch of guns in it. Oh, the only gun I have is a shoehorn. I got this really cool knife yesterday. Check this out. I actually just sharpened it, so it's really sharp. But it's a big one. Yeah. What is that a hunter's knife or? Yeah, pretty much. Um, pretty much like a utility knife. Oh, okay. I'll beat it up a little bit. I don't have like a really nice knife. I've got, I've got a few that I use to do stuff with, but not rob any stores. That's for sure. <laughs> So like what what happened, dude? Like what what happened when the guys pull a knife? Did they just like bust in the door and go straight to you and pull a knife on you? Yeah, pretty much. And if I don't open the register, they say they will stab me. And I'm trying to keep cool as much as I can, so nothing escalates. Yeah, how, like how how did you handle it though? I mean, you're, I'm sure yeah, you're, I, were you scared to death or what? No, not to death, but I was scared for sure. sure. And I was trying to keep my cool. Yeah. And I just know I had to do what they said or something would happen. So you were like convinced, like if you didn't open the register and do what this dude told you to do, like you were you like fully convinced he would he would have stabbed you? Yeah. Damn I'm dude. Pretty sure. Ah, oh, fuck that. You guys carry a baseball bat in the store or what? No, we're not allowed to. What? You, dude, get a hold of your boss and be like, dude, I'm not working here unless you let me carry a bat with a six-inch <laughs> nail through the top of it. Well, he's uh, talking to people. I don't know exactly who he's talking to, but they said to him that we were not allowed to. Fuck that guy. Have stuff like that. Fuck that guy. But now we have uh, like a pay safe on work so the we're not uh, we don't have access to the money until we close yeah yeah so what happens fuck man so what would happen if somebody came in they're like open the safe and you're like i can't dude then they will try to bust it and if they do the money is destroyed by ink oh okay that's clever but i feel like like, part of me feels like that's a bad idea, because if you tell the dude, like, you can't open the safe, like, I feel like he'd be like, fuck you, you're a liar, and would, like, try to stab you or something, you know? Then I would, uh, I, I would invite him in behind the register and let him see for himself. Yeah. So, uh, he's, no, I'm not lying. Then I would offer them to take whatever he wants. And dare need it for the real wifey emote. <laughs> Mrs. Lax <laughs> emote. People said hi. Hi. <laughs> so here's here's a fun story for you, man. Um, 
for like, I worked in law enforcement for like 10 years. And I worked in corrections, so I worked in a jail. I, I've done every job in a jail. But um, my, my wife is a server. She's a waitress. She works in a restaurant. Um, at this time, she worked at a different one. But there was, you know, you have like regular customers, just like you do at your gas station. You have regulars that you see and you know them by name and all that stuff. Um, I... I walked in, um, I was going to go have breakfast because I worked third shift. And, of course, I was going to go see her. Maybe she hooked me up with some free food. I don't know. I doubt it. But I was on I was on my way out. I, I'd already eaten, paid, you know, said bye to my wife, all that. I was on my way out the door. Um, and in passing, this older guy, he was like, he had a cane. Like, he was old, you know. He wasn't going to, like, run or, like, try to fight or anything like that. But... Um, he, uh, we, we passed each other, you know, and it wasn't one of those, like, he didn't say hi to me. I didn't say hi to him or anything like that. It, you know, we just passed each other. He was coming in, I was leaving and, um, he, like, I hear him go, Hey, like that, like kind of, it's one of those, it's one of those when you work that job and you hear somebody like say, Hey, to you in that way and not just like, Hey, or Hey, it's, Hey. Like the something just lights off in your head. You know something's wrong. You know. Yeah. It's one of those where you're just on alert. And um, I was in full uniform and all that stuff. So I was like, I had, I was clearly marked. You know, I had the badge on, had my belt with my gun on it and everything, and my spray and my taser and all that. And uh, I turn around, and the guy reaches into his fucking pocket, man, and he pulls out the back end of a fucking gun. And so I put my hand on my gun and holstered it. I had it halfway out the holster and I'm looking at him with my hand on my holster. And if he would have pulled that thing out of his pocket and even remotely lifted it to point at me, I would have shot the shit out of that guy. But Mm -hmm. he put it back in his pocket and I'm looking at him like, you ready to fucking go? We're going to do this or what? Cause I got a kid and a wife. I'm going the fuck home, you know? Um, Mm -hmm. And he was like totally like nonchalant, like just totally normal about it. And he put it back in his pocket and he's like, it's just a BB gun. And I look at him like, you are the dumbest fucking person I've ever met in my life. What the fuck is wrong with this guy? He's like, I just carry it around with me. It's just a BB gun. And I just turned around, dude. I just turned around and walked out. I'm just like, you motherfucker. I was so pissed at this guy. I could have punched him. But why? Um, dude, I, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't understand. I, I, me either. I don't. And I still don't to this day. I'm so confused why somebody would want to do that. Carry a BB gun in their fucking pocket. Just because it looks intimidating and you're trying to be tough. It's not funny. It's not fucking funny. It's not cute. It doesn't make you look cool. You look like an idiot. So. But you said he was old. Yeah. An old guy. Do you know? Do you know how how old or approximately? Uh, probably like late sixties, early seventies. And it was still carrying a BB gun. Yeah, that looked like a pistol. It looked like a six hour. Okay. It was a six hour replica BB gun. Yeah, exactly. Uh. Imagine my surprise and how ready I was to like defend myself and have to shoot somebody in my wife's restaurant where she worked in front of my wife it's like dude fuck that guy yeah I've never seen the guy again but I'm still pissed at him (laughs) I wonder why (laughs) Uh, yeah what are you gonna do yeah yeah I get I worked corrections for like 10 years man I did that's why I have the beard now I never used to have this beard (sighs) I was clean shaven, baby faced, and just all all about exploring the world. And then I got into corrections. <laughs> I always get complained when I have a beard, so I shave like two days a week. Like from your boss or from worker or from empl- or uh, no, customers, family, friends. What are they complaining about? It's your face. Yeah, I know, but some yeah, 
I don't know. Tell him to shut up. <laughs> Do you like having a beard? Yes and no. I love my beard. I love it, dude. I really do. It's all soft and stuff. My wife loves it. You love my beard? I do. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what guy? Follow me home. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was a good one, too. That's a good story. No, I love my beard, though. I'm glad I got out of law enforcement so I could grow one. Oh, you're not allowed to have a beard if you work in law enforcement? No, you can only have a mustache. You can only have a f just a mustache. Imagine me with just a mustache. Look how stupid I look. <laughs> <laughs> you said that I didn't. <laughs> well, you're not arguing it either, so. <laughs> True. But, um, oh, there's another time. Like, just before I got out of law enforcement, I made this guy cry. Probably like this 50 year old dude. Um, my wife worked at, she's worked at three restaurants. This was the second restaurant. The first restaurant she worked at was the idiot with the BB gun. The mm. second restaurant was this guy. Um, we'll just call him Captain Creeper. Um, <clears throat> I'm not going to say his name, obviously, on stream, but <laughs> your beard is weird. <laughs> your beard is weird, man. <laughs> um, so this guy that I know very well from law enforcement decided to go say hi to my wife at work like not literally like he just came in as a customer didn't know she worked there um, but he was in there eating and I, I think my wife was serving him he was at one of her tables and um, you can tell this better than I did because it didn't happen to me what did the dude say to you? He just made a comment about my ass. He made yeah. a comment about your ass? What did he say? What was um, I don't remember what you told me he said, though. Something about um, him, like, being lonely and... No, he was with his son, and he was drunk, and he was saying, like... Um, I don't remember. It was, like, two, three years ago. Two years something ago. He was drunk? Something along I the I guess he was drunk. My ass after I offered him dessert, I'm pretty sure. So. Oh. Yeah, she offered him dessert, and then basically, instead of electing to eat dessert, he offered to eat her ass for dessert instead, sort of thing. I made a comment like that. Sexual nature, I don't remember exactly. Yeah. And uh, didn't he, like, did he follow you? Yeah, to, like, two He followed you. Stations. Yeah. Because she called me. Um, I was at home, and she called me, and she's like, this guy's following me home from work. And I was like, what? Um, trying to get some more details. And she's like, well, she's like, I left work. And I noticed this car was behind me for a really long time. So I stopped at a gas station, you know, because it's a public place. And there's always people at gas stations. And so she stopped there. And she's like, I went inside and just acted like I was buying some shit. Got back in my truck and left that gas station. And as I left, he followed me still. And so I went to another gas station. And he pulled into that gas station and watched me in there. Followed me to that gas station. And that's why I'm calling you. I was like, I'll be right there. And she was describing the guy to me. And um, she remembered his last name. And as soon as she told me his last name, I was like, ah, oh, yeah, I remember this dude. I know how to find him. So she got home. And... Uh, I left, I left one of the guns out just in case um, for her while I was gone if he decided to show up, you know. Because we got a kid, mm -hmm. man. We got, we got a kid. And, you know, we're, we're going to protect our family and shit. I'll, I'm not afraid to say that. We will. But, um, so I went and I found the guy. Um, I knew where, I, I know where he goes and I know who he socializes with. I found him in like five minutes. Um. And he knows me, and I have always gotten along with him. I've never had a problem with him. And oh, so you knew the guy? Oh, yeah, I know the guy. Um, I knew him from law enforcement. I dealt with him I dealt with him in jail quite a bit, but he, was, he wasn't a bad guy. He was nice. He was respectful, and we got along, and he knows he knew my last name. And, and he, you know, he obviously, you know, Officer Dials or whatever, but um, so, yeah, he knew me. I knew him, 
and I've been dealing with him for years because he's a drunk. Um, so I uh, I went to that gas station, and then he said, you know, he said something to me. He's like, "Hey, what's up, man?" And then I was like, "All right, game on, motherfucker." So I I was really nice to him. I walked up to him and I was like, "Hey, man, how's it going?" Oh, pretty good, man. I'm just hanging out and um, trying to get some lottery tickets and stuff for tonight and blah, 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 and just just kind of shooting the shit. And uh, I was like, hey, it's like I need to talk to you for a minute. And uh, usually, like, when people know, I don't know, people are really weird around police officers and corrections officers or anybody who's in, like, a law enforcement uniform. People are just really weird, you know, even mm-hmm. if they're not, like, in trouble like inherently and subconsciously you think you're in trouble so people just act really uncomfortable and it's always funny to me it was always funny um but as soon as i was like hey i need to talk to you for a minute like it was one of those like subconscious like shit what did i do (laughs) sort of things but um i was like so i was like i heard a story today about you he's like you did i was like yeah um like i was told um you were sexually harassing a waitress at her job and he's like i don't know what you're talking about i was like really i was like you didn't say you were gonna eat her ass he's like i wouldn't say nothing like that i wouldn't do that i was like um i'll tell you what man i was like if you want to change your tune i was like that was my wife uh that you said that to and you followed her ass home from work i said so how you want to deal with this and he got really really scared um he started like shaking and stuff, man. Like his hands were like going like this. Serves him right. He was nervous as fuck, dude. Yeah, serves him right. You're goddamn right it does. Serves him right. But he was like shaking and stuff, and he's like one of those like oh fuck sort of things, you know. He's like oh man, I, I'm so sorry. I I, I I'm so sorry. I I didn't know that she was your wife. And I'm just lonely. And then he tried to play like the sympathy card. Like, I'm the lonely old guy who lives by myself and this and that. And I'm like, dude, cut the fucking bullshit. I was like, that's yeah. my wife. She wears a ring. You know she's married. And now you know she's married to me. And I was like, I'll tell you what. And he's like, he's like, are you going to punch me now? I was like, no, I'm not going to fucking punch you in front of a store. And I'm not going to get an assault charge because you decided to sexually harass my wife. I said, if anything, I should report you, and she should report you, and then you can get charged that way if they want to. Um, I was like, no, I'm not going to punch you. Um, but I wasn't in uniform this time. Just uh, for anybody watching the, the stream, I wasn't in uniform at this time. I was in plain clothes. Um, but uh, I, I may have threatened the dude a little bit, kind of, indirectly. And I was like, look, dude, I was like, that's my wife. And it doesn't matter who it is. It's- yeah, I, I told him that, too. I was like, I said, that's if it's not my wife, it's somebody's wife. Yeah. Or somebody's girlfriend or whatever. And I was like, you don't fucking talk to people like that. And I said, because it's my wife, I said, here's what we're going to do. I said, the next time you see her, like, you make sure you apologize to her. You do me a favor. And you go apologize to her. I said, but if I ever hear you doing that shit to my wife again, we're going to have a completely different conversation. This is going to go real bad for you. And what did he say then? That's when he started to cry. (laughs) (laughs) He had it coming. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty cool, man. I'm pretty cool. When you start fucking with the people I love and my family and stuff, uh uh-uh. I don't care. That's the line. I don't give two shits. But, uh, yeah, weird, dude. People, f- people are weird. Yeah, especially in the area I live in. I don't know anything about the area and what you live in, man. I don't, I don't know anything about how people are there. I don't know anything about it. Have you ever heard a place called Malmö? Uh-uh. It's like, okay, search it on Google and you will see. How do you spell it? Uh, M, uh, you have to spell it with an O in the end, so M-A-L-M-O. Malmo. Malmo. 
Malmo is the capital and largest city. Is it, how do you pronounce it, Skane County? Uh, Learn, sorry. Metropolis, uh, Gamma Minus World City, the 10th tier of cities as listed. The third largest city in Sweden. Yep. After Stockholm and was it? This the Goten largest city. Gothenburg. Yeah, Gothenburg is the second Gothenburg. largest city in Sweden. The sixth largest city in Scandinavia, with a population of above three hundred thousand. So you live in a big city, man. Yeah. Damn. Malmo region. Metropolitan region is home to seven hundred thousand people. Orsund region which includes Malmo, is home to 3.9 million people. That's a big place. It wow. Is. It's one of the earliest and most industrialized towns of Scandinavia. Malmo University has its own university. It does. It has a city uh, that dates back to 1275. Very cool historic and stuff but I'm looking at an aerial view photo of Central Mama what is this building that's like twisted a uh, turning torso what what kind of what do they do there it's like uh, there are people that lives there but it's most for, most for like uh, conferences and things like that oh I got you let me see if I can turn this on for stream let's see if we can I know I have one that has. Oh, that's your face. Ugh. Um, let me change. Uh, turning torso is Sweden, and uh, is the Sweden's highest skyscraper, uh, and it was built 27th of August 2005. Gotcha. Uh, the building is 190.4 meters high and is mainly used as a residence house with apartments and things like that. The house has been uh, a landmark in the Olesund region. For some reason, my window capture doesn't want to pull it up. Okay, that's stupid. So we'll try... That won't work either. Oh, man. They started to build it at 2001 and finished it at two th uh, 2005. So it took them four years to build it. Yeah, my stream just won't pull it up. I don't have a way to show it on there. That sucks. Let's see if I can do it. Uh, I don't know, maybe I can just try to add it on stream real quick so people who are watching know what the hell we're talking about right now. Yeah. But it's, it's not something special that's just uh, another building. It's, it doesn't capture it. Bastards. That's alright though. But no, it's like a giant white building that's like twisted. It's really yeah. cool. Really cool looking. We don't have anything like that where I live. And I see you guys have a stadium. You have like a yeah. bunch of like, I don't know if they're like housing units, but they're all just like really organized. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how to respond to that. <laughs> it's an aerial view, man. I don't know. But this really looks like a map that would belong in like the game PUBG. Yeah. Uh, the building has 147 apartments. Uh, and the two top floors is used as a conference. It's used for conferences. Uh, so... Is that like the similar area in which you live? Get away from the closed door, man. No, uh, if I, let's say I go by bike, it would take me like 15 minutes to get there. Oh, okay. 
So you're, so you're in the Malmö general is area. Like, yeah, Malmö is known for having everything close. So you don't have to go by car. You can walk or take a bike. Everything is close, but yeah. 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 After uh, after this podcast, I'll show you a picture of the city where I live at. You'll, okay. You'll be like, "Wow, that's totally different." <laughs> <laughs> my my town has ninety five hundred people in it. Oh, okay. Nine thousand five hundred. Yours has three point six million. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty big difference. Yeah, it's a really big difference. If you were going to rent an apartment in Turning Tours, though. Uh, a three rumor would cost four to five million Swedish crowns with a monthly fee of about four thousand Swedish crowns a month. What is that to dollars? To USD. I can check. Uh, United the States. The monthly down. fee uh, in so it's Swedish crowns four thousand a month. That's four hundred and forty-three dollars and thirteen cents a month. That's actually a little bit cheaper than what's normally expected, which is around five hundred um, to six hundred. And some places it's a thousand. And then the by now price is. Let's see here one. It's. One million one hundred seven no, eleven thousand no what hell, one hundred and ten ten thousand seven hundred and eighty three dollars. That's pretty normal. So it's it's not much different as far as prices. No. Okay. Uh, I wouldn't live in a building like that. Yeah, we just live in a house. So. I don't like the apartment life. I'm too old for that now. <laughs> I never lived in a house, so I I only lived in an apartment, so I don't have that issue. A house is kind of nice, man. It's like all to yourself. You don't have like creepy neighbors, and you don't have to hear people like banging their heads on the walls and stuff next door to you, and all that stuff. And nobody's stomping above you, and nobody's making thuds and arguing below you. You don't have to fight for parking. It's pretty cool. I don't have a car, so I don't have to fight for parking either. Oh, there you go. I have a yeah. car. We have two vehicles. I have one. She has one. We have two dogs. They get to run around outside, have a garage, all kinds of cool stuff. I always wanted a dog, but I don't have the time and I don't have the afford to it. So yeah. yeah. But I like dogs. I love dogs, man. I love my German Shepherd. I've got one. She's pretty. Renzo. Oh yeah, a German Shepherd. Oh yeah. Come here. Check her out. My plate's down here. You're gonna see my blueberry pie. Renzo, come here. Hi. Come here. Come here. How old is she? Two. Two. Uh, hi. Say hi. Oh, she's cute. Oh, she's pretty, man. She's beautiful. Check this out. Shake. Oh. Shake. Good girl. What? What? Shake. Shake. Good girl. <laughs> and then my other one there, she's a um, half beagle, um, half German Shepherd. Oh. No, man, I love dogs. Yeah. Yeah, I do too. I do too. I had two cats when I lived with my mom. They were just, like, boring. I got a cat too, but he's really cool. Like, he's kind of boring because he's older and he lays around a lot, but, like, he's the nicest cat I think I've ever had in my life. Yeah, my two cats, they were always sleeping. Yeah, he does. But cats, are do they do that, man. They, they're supposed to sleep, like, 16 to 18 hours a day. Did you know that? That I didn't know. Yeah. They're kind of like koalas. Like, koalas sleep for, like, 20 hours a day. How about sloths? Um, sloths don't sleep that much. I don't, I don't, I don't know the exact number, but I know they don't sleep that much. They're just very slow and their hearts beat very, very slowly, which is why they have to move so slow because if they moved any faster, um, their heart wouldn't be able to keep up with it. And actually their hearts would blow up. 
I thought they slept more than that. I don't know. They might. Uh, they sleep to like nine and a half hours. Ah, okay. my little Twitch Prime. Oh, he's got Twitch Prime. I like it. It can take up to an hour for a sloth to move one meter. Yeah. Because if they move too fast, boom, hearts pop. Just dead. Pretty bizarre, isn't it? Yeah. A sloth in the rainforest sleeps about missed about nine and a half hours compared to a sloth in captivity that sleeps about 16 hours and 24 hours. Yep. I'm saying people should sub to you if they got Twitch Prime. That's true, Milo. They should sub to me. Matt, Matt G203, he says, which one would if you two fought? Which one would what if you two fought? And who two? What are you talking about? <laughs> Speak English, bro. I have no idea what you just said. Like, which one would win if, if he and I fought? I don't know, dude. Are we, are we playing, like, normal rules or prison rules? Or are we, like, cage fighting or what? Me versus Demos? I don't know, dude. Do you know how to fight? Yeah, I took... Uh, taekwondo for five years, I think. Nice. And I got up to red belt, that was just below the black belt. Badass. I was trained in boxing um, all my life, uh, kickboxing, Muay Thai, uh, BJJ, Jiu Jitsu, all kinds of stuff. For a lot of years, my body's all fucked up because of it now. Um, I don't know, dude. If we're, if we're playing prison rules, I mean, I'm just gonna like shank him. I'll win. I'll do it. <laughs> and did you compete when you were doing? No, boxing? I I didn't do the competition stuff. I trained um, quite a bit. I had a lot of people trying to talk me into it. They're like, "Man, you should compete. You're pretty good." I'm like, "I'm not very good. I'm not gonna compete." <laughs> but at the time, I was playing other sports like baseball. Um, my my brother and I were really into baseball, and he ended up playing professional baseball, and I probably should have, um, but I just didn't love it like he did. Like that was just the thing that like I didn't. I looked at it and I didn't want to do it the rest of my life, so I wasn't gonna like live a lie and continue to do it when I didn't really love it and waste people's time. Um, but I I did that for all the way up until through like college, and then. The rest of the time up until like now I just trained with uh especially with boxing. I love to box. Okay. Uh the Taekwondo teacher I had, he was the one to take Taekwondo to Sweden. Actually. Who's your teacher? Uh his name is uh Jo uh, Chin Huat. Hmm. Uh, I don't know his name. And uh, he was training under the person that created Taekwondo. Really? Yeah. Do you still uh, do you still work with him? No, I don't. You still talk to him at all? I was gonna say, let's get him on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, I meet him at my work sometimes when he comes by to watch his uh, wash his car and things like that. Oh, next time you see him, tell him, hey, you want to be on a podcast? I I think he would say no. Oh, dude, I'd love to have him, but that's fine. Uh, he has a black belt, and uh, in the black belts you have something that is called dawn. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, D -A as high as you go, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, in taekwondo you can only have nine dawn in the, the black belt, and he has that. He's ninth, ninth Dan. Yeah. Yeah. Some people say Dan. I've heard people say Don. I've heard both, but I don't know which one's actually the accurate one. I, I'm pretty sure you're right. Um, but it's it's like for for the people who don't know, it's like it's like an ascended black belt. You can go like you can go like black belt. It's like level two basically, like Super Saiyan two, yeah. Super Saiyan three. It's that's it's the exact same thing like that. Yeah. Well, it was an honor to 
have him as the instructor. I bet. He sounds like he's a pretty kick-ass guy, though. He is. You ever he absolutely is. You ever notice how, like, most of the people who you know could, like, tear your head off are, like, the most down-to-earth people you'll ever meet in your life, and they're, like, the nicest people ever? Yeah. Yeah. I always thought that was pretty cool. And then it was always the people who, like, didn't know shit or, like, the loudest and most obnoxious. It's funny how that works. The guys who can kick the most ass, you would never know because they don't tell you. But the guys who kick the least ass will tell you how much asses they, how many asses they kick. They were all bragging. <laughs> Fucking liars. <laughs> I always thought that was funny, though. Always met a lot of people like that. Especially, and there's a bunch of people, a lot of people. That... Oh yeah. Especially in my career that I worked in with law enforcement and everybody. Oh, beat your ass. Okay. Come on, then. <laughs> but I'm uh, I'm always pretty calm. I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty rational and I'm patient. So it's one of those like, okay, um, let's do it, man. And I usually never that. fight, but I only do it when I have to. Yeah, and that's one of the first things they teach you is like we're teaching you this so you learn a skill and you learn an art and you learn honor and you learn how to take care of yourself and your body and your mind and your spirit and make yeah. it all one not to go out there and be uh, Captain Kangaroo and use this to be a bully and a piece of shit person this yeah. is actually supposed to make you a better person and there are people who just don't understand that it sucks there's people taking martial art lessons just to be able to beat up persons and things like that. And that's the disrespect to the martial arts. Yeah, and yeah. The, it's all about honor, man. Yeah. Fighting is entertaining. Don't at me. <laughs> Fighting is entertaining, man. I love it. I love to watch the UFC stuff. I, I love it. I've always loved it. I've just never wanted to do it because I don't like getting knocked out and I don't like getting punched in the face. It's not fun. Uh, there is a UFC fighter from Sweden. I don't know if you've ever, ever heard of him. Uh, what was his name? Man, my brain is not working today. <laughs> uh. Some of the newer guys... I, I haven't kept up to date with like the newer the newer uh, class in the UFC. I, I was really into it um, before the UFC when it was Pride. Um, when Pride was the thing, UFC was just coming up. And then UFC pretty much took over thanks to Dana White. And then um, they pretty much brought all the Pride guys over. And those Pride guys just slaughtered people, man. Anderson Silva, he was a beast. Just went out there and killed people in the UFC. But they, they elevated the competition. Yeah, uh, the Swedish fighter Alexander Gustafsson. Yeah, yep. Yeah. He's from. Yeah. That's the only MMA fighter I know. <laughs> uh, Mirko Krokop? You don't know him? He's from, uh, he's from Russia, but uh, he was. He was. He wasn't. Was he Spetsnaz? I think he was Spetsnaz, um, but he worked. He worked as an agent, like a um, kind of like our FBI. Um, he was. He's basically that in Russia. He was a special forces um, operative in Russia, and then later turned UFC fighter. And that dude, like his legs, were literally like this big around man, just like gigantic legs because he had these big swooping kicks. And if you like sometime when you get bored and like get on YouTube, um, look up Mirko Krokop. Um, and he always. What did you say, Mikkel Krokop? Yeah, Mirko Krokop. Oh, I know who that is. Mirko. Um, but he wears black trunks with red and white checkered um, on the left leg, and that dude had this right kick that he would just sweep up and tag people right on the temple, man. And just, he killed so many people like that. Like, not literally, obviously, but um, 
I, I watched him knock out so many people with that right that right kick. It was just ungodly powerful, kicking people's heads off. Um, but there's a lot of training behind that kick. Oh yeah, oh yeah. But his, my god, dude, he there was nobody that had a harder kick than he did. Uh, when he was in his prime, he was just slaughtering people. And that was when uh, Fedor Emelianenko was really popular and he was kicking all the asses. Um, I liked Fedor a lot. And then Anderson Silva, that guy who's probably one of my favorite fighters of all time. You want to learn martial arts so you can dare double drug dealers. <laughs> so you can catch him in a stairwell. <laughs> Yeah, that that Daredevil scene. Um, you said you don't watch Netflix, right? I do watch Netflix, but it's only one thing I watch on them. What do you watch them? How I Met Your Mother. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh man. And I, I have seen all of the episodes, but I watch it over and over again. It's I still find it amusing. I do that with The Office. I love The Office. Um. But there's a show you need to watch when you want to take a break from that shitty show. Um, <laughs> I'm joking. Um, there's a show called Ozark. You need to watch okay. that. It's awesome. There's, what is it about? Um, it's about drug dealers. It's about a guy who is an accountant. Um, and he later becomes an accountant for the number two largest cartel in Southern America and Mexico. Um, the second largest cartel. He becomes that cartel head's a, may like main accountant and money launderer. Um, I don't want to spoil a lot of it. Uh, there's a shitty deal that goes on behind his back without him knowing. Uh, a couple of his friends get shot in front of his face because of it. Um, and then he comes up with a cockamamie, just crazy plan uh, to move to the Ozarks um, here in the States and capitalize on a business opportunity to make the money back that was missing. I'm not going to tell you how it goes missing, because it'll spoil it. Um, but he comes up with a plan to get back millions of dollars, I think it's like $8 million, that he had no part in its disappearance of, and didn't even know about it. Um, so they let him do it, and then the story progresses from there and he's like married and has two kids and he's got to navigate being a father and a husband uh, with now laundering money full time for the cartel um, with various people just dying around him and having to explain it without getting caught it's very cool but it's it sounds good yeah, it's, it's very, very good. Jason Bateman's in it, and his character is just amazing. He does a good job, and it's just a very raw, like, real... It, 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 it's more realistic than most scripted shows that you're going to watch. It's very intense. Is it based on real events, or...? It's not based on real events. I'm sure similar things in the United States have happened, you know, because um, people do that shit anyway, but... Um, no, it's just a very, very well done show. It's very well written. It's not too outlandish. Um, but that's the kind of stuff that does actually happen here. Um, not a lot, but it happens. But we actually, we have a very big uh, drug, drug trafficking ring that networks all over the United States. Um, they have routes that they take. This is This is actually legit. I've seen the maps and I've seen the routes that they take and stuff, but... Um, basically, if you were to try, trace a line from Canada um, straight down to Mexico, there's one main line that people take for a drug route uh, because one of the highways is basically a straight shot between all three countries. Um, a lot of traffickers use that route, and that route comes right through the middle of my state, um, which really sucks because there's a lot of drugs here because of it. Um, some of the drugs that get filtered out and... Um, get taken away um they get sold around here and there's a lot of methamphetamine here and a lot of heroin here because of it um but one of the main routes goes basically straight through canada all the way down through my state um, and touches miami 
Um, one really big one goes through Texas, and obviously one really big one goes to California and New York. Basically the main hubs. But a lot of drugs, man. You guys we have that problem there? Drugs, yeah. We do. What's... We have a lot of weed and uh, heroin. Yeah, heroin's terrible. Yeah. Do you uh, do you think weed's a drug? Like, do you do you think badly about weed? Like, do you think it's a bad thing? I heard it's being used as medicinal tool as well, but yeah, I I wouldn't I would never use it. Really? Never. never. Even if you were like dying and in like complete pain and had no other options, or well, it's it's a different dose at that point. Uh, how do you how do I say it? They don't use it like the dealers do. Well, the dealers you use know. it to get high and make a profit. Yeah, but yeah. If I if I had to use it to survive, then yes, I would. If you had to use it because you were in pain and didn't want to use, like a narcotic, like um, oxycotton or something like that, and get hooked on that. Would you would you prefer to use oxys or would you prefer to use medicinal marijuana to alleviate the pain? Then I would choose medicinal marijuana. Yeah, I would too. Yeah, because those uh, heavy pharmaceutical drugs, man, they're nasty. They're so bad for you. They're so bad for you. And people yeah. get hooked on and those ma- things, man. And mar- marijuana is not a natural, so. People get hooked on Oxy and Xanax and all these painkillers and shit around here. And it's nuts, man. It tears people up. I've seen so many people die around here because of drug overdoses, and it's just ridiculous. Opioids are bad in Knoxville. Where I'm at. Yeah, they're bad here too, man. It's bad everywhere. But it's people make a lot of money off that shit. But... No, go watch Ozark, man. I, I think you'll like it. It's a good show. Maybe I'll check it out when I go to sleep later. Yeah. The first, if you make it through the first episode, you're going to be hooked on it. You'll be like, yeah, this is awesome. And that's what happened to me. I watched the first episode. It's 58 minutes long. I watched it, and I was just like, oh, my God. How have I not ever watched this before? So I binge watched it, and uh, I watched all of it in a week. <laughs> So it's like a movie or it's a documentary or it's a, a series? It's or... a TV series. Um, okay. They're getting ready. I think they're getting ready to come out with the next season. I'm not sure when it's coming out. Um, let me look real quick. Let's see here. When is Ozark Season 2 going to be released? Highly anticipated seasons, but confirmed. Season one was released in July of last year. A financial advisor drags his family from Chicago to the Missouri Ozarks when he must launder five hundred million dollars in five years to appease a drug boss. Yeah. Netflix has confirmed that Ozark season two will be released on thirty first of August. Which is already out, which we've seen that. 2018. No information on a season three. Hmm. Do you want to watch the trailer for it? What? Do you want to watch a trailer for Ozark? No, I can check it out later. Fine, dude. You'll like it. I gotta finish season three of Daredevil, but Ozark's definitely on the list of things to watch. Yeah, don't start watching Ozark before you finish that because you're gonna watch Ozark, you're gonna get hooked, and you're gonna watch the whole thing. So, um, well, I'm hooked on How I Met Your Mother at the moment. <laughs> Legendary. I, I I've watched the uh, seasons over and over again. I know the Thank episodes. You. You know, you quote the I, shows and you're quoting all the stuff and yeah. <laughs> yeah, I say things before they do and yeah. That's how I am with The Office. And the cool <laughs> thing about it, man, is 
<clears throat> you can understand this is when you watch a show over and over and over like that and you watch the same episode again um you start to notice little things that you never noticed before in the show that pop up and you're like dude i never noticed that was in the background and it's kind of like a little hint to other things that you catch later yeah. on they do that all the time and i love it uh, that's happened to me many times little secrets little teasers i love them uh, one show that that didn't happen to me it was uh, the big bang theory ah yeah i watched a little bit of that it was funny but i i don't know it didn't capture me totally that sheldon guy he's he's weird he's really weird yeah he's a good actor though he does a great job yeah. and those guys are set for life as far as money goes those guys are rich for the rest of their lives that's the thing other actors would never be able to uh play sheldon as he yeah. Do, does yeah like who else would some do that part some characters is just one actor no one else it's like they wrote that part for him like who else would yeah do that? nobody else would do as good a job ever no no one but I watched a little bit of that. I like The Office a lot. That's my show. That's always my go-to. But Ozark's really good. Um, I watched a lot of F is for Family. Um, it's it's like a cartoon series. Funny. It is hilarious. So much weird shit happens in it. Um, but Bill Burr, he's a comedian here that's very popular. He voices the main character of the show. And he just he nails it. It's like they, they wrote the character for him too. So it's one of those okay. deals. Usually I just watch series I watched before because then I know I don't waste my time. <laughs> yeah. <right. laughs> no, that's, dude. That's me. So we've been going at this I'm... about an hour and a half, man. We have? Yeah. We're on an yeah. hour and 27 minutes right now. <laughs> time flies. That's, time flies. That's why I like doing these. <clears throat> They're fun. You talk about a lot of cool stuff without actually having to say anything. Yeah. But the time flies by when you have fun. Yeah. But if you don't mind, um, we're going to have to wrap this up, dude. Because I have to get up at 4.30 in the morning and it's 11 p.m. <laughs> Which means I'm going to have to go to bed and get at least... You said 4, 4 a.m. 4.30, yeah. 4.30. It's 4.57 here right now. That's, yeah, I would have already been up and getting ready for my day 27 minutes ago. So, yeah. <clears throat> but, uh, no, it was fun, dude. I, I appreciate you uh, staying up so late or early to do this. Yeah, I had nothing else planned, so why not? It must be nice. <laughs> I can, I'm going to put in another 70 hours this week. <laughs> um. Man. 70 hours and I work like six hours a day for like three days a week Ooh, yeah yeah I need to find a gig like that so I can do this more <laughs> so yeah I no, I appreciate it man so how how can these guys how do they find your stuff um, you're on you're on twitch you're on Twitter are you on anything else I have a Facebook page okay well is it the same demos official or uh, it should be okay I'll follow you there too uh, I can do it like this Do you uh, do you stream from Facebook as well? No, no. You just made the page for like networking purposes. Yeah. Okay, I got you. I do Twitch Facebook is, live uh, stuff too. For me, the Twitch is the main. Gotcha. I just sent you a link with my Facebook. Okay, cool. I'll check it out after we're done. Yeah. Um. Yeah, guys. No, I appreciate it, man. Um, guys, go follow Demos. He's he's a cool dude. Um, trying to get himself affiliated over on Twitch. Go follow him. Demos Official. D-Y-M-O-S. 
O F F I C I A L. Um, that's how it is on Twitch. That's how it is on Twitter and Facebook. Make sure you guys go follow him. You want to leave? Uh, you want to leave these viewers with anything else before we go? Any last? Words? I hope I see you in the future. I hope so too, man. It's pretty cool. We'll do it again down the road. Um, Absolutely. I'll keep an eye on you once we get you affiliated. We'll have you back on, and we'll talk about that experience. Looking forward to it. And hopefully by then you would not have had anybody else pull a knife on you while you're trying to work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, man. We're going to get out of here. Guys, I appreciate it. If you're listening, if you're still listening through this on the podcast, thank you. Um, sorry you didn't get to watch all the stuff, but you got the podcast. Um, but we're going to get out of here, guys. Uh, I will see you all later. Demos, you want to say bye? Take care, guys. Yo. Peace out, guys. Have a good one.